Hello and welcome to worship uh, at First United Methodist Church in Conway. Uh, if this is your first time here or if you, or if you grew up here, uh, we want to welcome you this day. Uh, and we trust that, we, that you will be inspired as we worship uh, together. Uh, today we are starting a new worship series uh, entitled Anything Good. Uh, this whole series was sparked by, by Nathaniel's question in our scripture reading for, for today. Uh, and the question is this, can anything good uh, come out of Nazareth? Uh, through this series, uh, we will explore some key questions that come from the scriptures uh, and affirm the idea that it is good for us to ask these questions uh, as a way to grow in faith. Uh, good things will come. Uh, through our faithful uh, exploration. Uh, we do hope that you will like and comment and share, uh, share this service uh, as a way for us to extend the good news uh, to others. So through word and through song, uh, with many helping to lead us uh, this day, uh, this promises to be a great day of worship. Welcome. As we worship together, let us join together in prayer. Lord, we come to you with questions. Sometimes we seek your guidance. Sometimes we are going through struggles or loss. Sometimes, honestly, we just want things to go better for us, as selfish as that may be. We want to understand others. We want to understand our world. And above all, we want to understand you, Lord. But we also know you will meet us in our questions. You may not always bring the answers we want. You may not even always bring an answer, but what you will bring is you. Let us find rest and comfort in knowing you are there through all these wondering, worrisome, and wonderful moments in life. Amen. And now bind us together with one heart as we pray the prayer of our Savior. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses and the law, and also the prophets, wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said, said to him, Did anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite whom whom there is no deceit. Nathaniel asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. And Nathaniel replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The word of the Lord. Where are you from? I am sitting in a gazebo where people have scratched their names and uh, dates and in some cases where they are from, including someone over there that has scratched that they're from Fort Smith. That is one of the answers to that question for me. Because as a pastor in the United Methodist tradition, I am moved around uh, to serve in a lot of different communities and all of those communities become part of who I am because they become part of where I am from. But at the same time, I don't actually like that question because I never know how to answer it because there are so many answers to it. In fact, I always end up giving too long of an answer. When someone asks me where I'm from, I take a deep breath and say, I was born in Stillwater, Oklahoma. When I was in third grade, we moved to a tiny town in Oklahoma called Perkins. Uh, then when I was in seventh grade, we moved for a brief time to the Bryant School District here in central Arkansas. Uh, then we moved into the Benton School District where I graduated from high school. Then I went to school at the U of A and lived in Fayetteville until we moved to Rogers. And then in Rogers, I got my call to ministry. That took me to Dallas for school for nine years. Then I served in West Memphis, Fort Smith, served in Little Rock while we lived in Hot Springs Village, and now I find myself in Conway. 
I am absolutely certain that is more of an answer than anybody ever wanted. (laughs) But I don't know how else to answer that question because all of those places are part of me. Jesus was also asked that question, where are you from? And there are honestly many answers for him as well. He could say he was from Bethlehem in the sense that that was where he was born. But he was born in Bethlehem because his father was part of the house of David and it was a census. And in fact, they really lived in Nazareth. They also lived in Egypt. And then, of course, there is the reality that Jesus is from God, which is how the Gospel of John opens. The Word was God and the Word is with God. And honestly, it's how Jesus answers that question, where are you from, that periodically gets him attention and periodically gets him in trouble. In fact, it's how that question is answered that will ultimately lead to his um, crucifixion. But here in this moment, where he is known to be from is from Nazareth, which is a nothing town. And he's a carpenter. A regular job. Nathaniel has made assumptions about who Jesus is based on where Jesus is from. Nathaniel asked this question, can anything good come from Nazareth? Let's think about Nathaniel for a minute. He asks more questions than he makes statements. He asks, can anything good come from Nazareth? And he asks... Basically, how do you know me to Jesus? Which is interesting because he makes assumptions about who Jesus is based on where, what he knows about Jesus. And yet he is surprised that Jesus makes assumptions about who he is uh, based on what Jesus knows about him. But he does ask, ask questions. He is a, a, a man full of questions more than he is of statements. Um, And Jesus names him as a good Israelite. And I think it is precisely because of his questions. The the name Israel, Israel, comes from when Jacob wrestled with God. And it means the one who wrestles with God. When we think about this people, this people who gave rise to our faith of Christianity, the the faith that is in many ways our mother. That's the name they chose for who they would be, Israel. The ones who wrestle with God. They didn't choose to be the Abrahamites. They didn't choose to be the Isaacites. They chose to be the Israelites, the ones who wrestle with God. And I think they do that because they recognize how much of their faith is built on questions. How much of their faith is wrestling with the things that are hard? How much of their faith is is going into that space where where there is uncertainty, um, where they have challenges, uh, where they face potential loss, and yet they, they go to God with these questions and wrestle with God with those questions. And so I think that the reason that Jesus, besides just knowing who Nathaniel is, uh, one of the reasons that Jesus can say, you are a good Israelite, is because Nathaniel comes with questions. This is where our faith grows. This is where our faith meets the realities of our lives. And it is in questions that we find ourselves going to God. If we had all the answers, we wouldn't need God. But because life gives rise to so many questions, so many things that we wonder about, that we need help with, that we struggle with, it drives us to go to God with our questions. And it is in that encounter with God that we then recognize who God is. And that's exactly what happens with Nathaniel. He goes forward with questions and then encounters and names 
who the Messiah is. He recognizes through his questions and the, and the wrestling that happens from that, that God is right before him. My friends, we are in a time of questions. I don't know how you go through what we've been through in the past few months and not have questions. To not wonder why they're suffering, to not wonder why we're going through, what the purpose is, all of these things. And as people of faith, those questions should drive us to God. We should have questions for God about all of this. And in all honesty, what is interesting about this reality and why sometimes I tell people the Bible is not necessarily a book of answers. The Bible is a book of questions because the questions in many ways are universal. The answers are contextual, which is why there are fewer answers because we need the space in Scripture to raise the questions and then we need to wrestle in our time and our place and what we're going through. We need to wrestle in that space with God for the answers. And so that's what we're going to do over the course of these next few weeks. We are going to raise some questions, questions that come straight out of Scripture, either questions that arise because of the Scriptures that we read or questions that are literally in the Scripture that speak into this moment that we are in right now. And we will use the question raised by Nathaniel to frame all of that. Can anything good come from Nazareth? Basically, the question that we are raising is, can anything good come from following Jesus Christ? In the midst of whatever we struggle with, what is the good of our faith? And I think what we will find is that the good of our faith is that we are given permission to raise these questions. That we are in fact even prompted by scripture to have these questions. And the questions that we will ask will be questions of what is my purpose? Why do I have to make sacrifices for the good of others? What do I do in the face of tremendous loss? How do I go on? We're going to raise these questions, universal questions, but we're going to put them in the context of our faith. We are going to struggle with God, wrestle with God, and come to an answer that maybe will work for us and maybe we won't come to an answer at all because the answer has to be worked out between you and God. But we'll help you see how our faith gives a path for that. And so, my friends, can anything good come from following this carpenter from Nazareth? Come and see. Maybe you'll be surprised. Maybe you'll find that Jesus was there in the questions all along. Amen. Let us join together in affirming our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Michelle, thank you for that word. Uh, we are living in a time when we are all have a lot of questions uh, in our hearts, and, and we do want people to know that that is a, a good thing. It, it can be a very faithful thing. Right. And it is also good to seek to be in the presence of God in the midst of this time. And so starting this week, we will be offering some resources on Facebook and YouTube where you can try out some spiritual practices. 
and we'll also be offering some space of prayer. We feel like uh, this is a time when we need uh, that sort of spiritual connection with God, and it's also a space where we can do this together and share in community in that space as well. Thank you, yes. And even though we are not meeting in person right now, there are many ways to connect. This is one of them, but we have opportunities for youth and, and mid-youth and children to connect as well, as well as adults through Sunday school, uh, through opportunities like these uh, spiritual practices. Uh, we are moving towards Lent, uh, and our plan is to have a, uh, a Bible study that we would love for all of you to be involved in. Uh, we are working out the details about how we're going to do that uh, in, in terms of, of doing that together, uh, but we would love for you to plan on being a part of that. Uh, and you can read in the written communications about opportunities to help be a facilitator uh, for that. We would love for you to consider that as well. As we close out our worship, the praise band brings us a song, If We Ever Needed You, and if there was ever a time for such a song, this is it. Enjoy.
Friends, receive this benediction. Take your questions to God, for in doing so, you seek the Holy, and you will find the Christ. Amen.